So I'm using this shed to experiment with a number of ideas, harebrained schemes, building techniques that pop into my head to see how they go. And one of those is this plastic fascia. This is a PVC product and it's rot proof because it's plastic. And fascia gets a lot of weather. And I don't like to muck around with rotting wood and having to replace it and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, plastic seems like a really good material for this because it's rot proof. The problem is that water can still get behind it at the seams and at the holes. Anywhere you have a screw that goes through this or anywhere two pieces come together because these do get wet. The roof barely covers them and gutters leak. So I want a fascia that's bomb proof. I want a fascia that is like a bathtub. Like there's no way water can get from the outside to the inside of the fascia. So for the screw holes, I just don't screw it from the outside. I screw it from the inside. I do pocket holes in rafter tails and I screw back from the inside of a subfascia like this so that the outside face is uninterrupted plastic and there's no holes for water to get through. For the joints, what I'm experimenting with is solvent welding. I use just PVC cement like you get in the plumbing section of the hardware store for conduit or for pipes and you can get it in clear or in white. And so that stuff actually melts melts the plastic and then it melts together and becomes one piece and that is a waterproof permanent connection. There's a couple of ways I could see that going wrong. First of all, there's no allowability for expansion or contraction, so it's possible that on a really hot day or a really cold day those joints could buckle or break. I haven't seen that happen yet, but something that's in, in my head. The other thing is that I don't know if that cement is UV stabilized, so my joints could get brittle and start to crack over time in the sun. That's why I'm trying it on a shed, see how it goes. So I've had I've had some of these joints up for a couple of years now and haven't seen any issues, haven't seen anything that, that makes me think this isn't going to work. Anyway, I didn't film it the first time I did it because I was just kind of mucking around and figuring out as I went. And here I'm doing a repair. You can see this is an old piece that's a little banged up, but it's sound enough to keep. And I'm going to put a new piece up in here and across and around the corner. And so I'll go ahead and film how I glue up these joints and what it's like to work with this stuff. And yeah, when all is said and done, the goal is that I will have a perimeter all the way around the roof edge of this structure that is impervious and rot proof. So first thing I'm going to do is these, you see this profile is kind of screwy. They expect you're only going to see one side of it, you know, put it flat against a wall or something. And I think they call this door jam. So yeah, you don't see the back of it and to save material, make it cheaper. It's not solid. It's got these grooves in it. Well, that doesn't suit me because if I butt a piece up here, I'll have these holes. Like I said, no holes. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a half lap joint. I'm going to cut this back to where it's solid so that when my new piece comes in and butts up here, it'll have a solid glue seam all the way down with no, uh, no holes in it. All right, so nothing's quite square and perfect in here, but uh, butted up there, tuned up the cut with a handsaw a couple of times. And the nice thing is the cement has solids in it. The fit doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to drive yourself crazy doing joinery with plastic. And it works really easy with hand tools. This is what I got. It happens to be OD. Really the only important thing on here is clear or white. You don't want a bright blue joint because that would look silly. And uh, yeah, I'm going to separate this joint, slather a bunch of this goo on here. And as I said, this has solids in it. This is a mixture of a solvent that dissolves vinyl and a bunch of vinyl sawdust, essentially some in solution, some dissolved plastic. So the solvents melt this vinyl, this PVC, polyvinyl chloride, vinyl, same stuff. Well, not exactly the same, but for the purpose of solvents, close enough. And that's going to soften this plastic wherever I brush it and add some to it. And then when I squish it together, it should mix. And then as the solvents flash off, as they evaporate, the this plastic will solidify and the new solids will solidify and it will weld this entire joint. So what I'm going to do now that I'm happy with this fit is I'm going to separate this joint. I have a clamp far to the left here off camera that's just supporting the tail end. I'm going to loosen this, slide the whole thing over. I can smear a bunch of glue, cement, whatever you want to call it, in here 
bottom up, clamp it, let it dry, and that should provide the mechanical bond I'm looking for. And then I have some glass eyedroppers, and I'll come back and I'll actually fill the face here in case there are any little gaps or anything that didn't squish out or didn't fill up when I did the first glue up. That's more about almost caulking it, like that is a the water resistive surface as opposed to uh, the mechanical connection. And then I'll cut this all off flush, tidy up this broken corner, uh, maybe do another layer of cement, and then I can screw this in from the back of the subfascia and this piece will be installed and this corner will be water fast. All right, while that dries, I'm gonna go below and screw it in from the back. And then that should be long enough that I can come back up here, trim it off and show you the eyedropper thing. All right, thanks for the magic of editing. This has had some time to dry and the face is screwed in from the back. The next step is to trim this overhang off and I've got a little cleat for the standing seam roof that sticks out a bit too far. So that's gotta come off as well. That's looking pretty tidy. I have a cheapy glass eyedropper and a polyethylene funnel. Even the solvent cement won't stick to polyethylene. There. Now I just take an eyedropper full. It's just like a little baby MIG welder. Give that a second to wick in, do it again. There we go. Now the hope is that that is all welded in one piece and it's a little more finicky than caulking, but unlike caulking, it should never have to be redone. All right, to carry on, it's uh, pretty simple. Dry fit the butt joint, so very little prep to do. I cut the ends nice and square, dry fit it, make sure I'm happy with the gap there. Um, this stuff is super bendy. And so what I did here is when I screwed down this piece, I didn't screw the last couple of courses. And when I dry fit this, there was a little gap at the top. And so I was able to flex this down about an eighth of an inch and clamp it. So there's a little tiny gap up here. And now when I fit this piece in, I get a good tight seam. I think that's better than cutting it to fit because if I cut it to fit, this wouldn't be straight. Since these are square, I do what I need to do to get those to mate good. And I don't have like chevron or anything weird going on in this joint so from here it's really simple i just slather on some more goop butt these up flush up the surface clamp it let it dry then go back through and carry on the screwing All right, the last bit of fascia is the trickiest because it is a rake piece. And unlike the Eve, the rake does not have a subfascia. There's no board straight behind this that I can run screws in from the inside and not have any through holes. What I did last time to deal with this is I put, what do you call them? They're not rafters when they go horizontal into a rake. Purlins? I don't know. The boards that come out that this screws into, I put pocket holes in them. And I lined those holes up such that the screw would land on one of these ribs, and that was good enough. 
problem this time around, you see this dirty, nasty piece is one of the old broken ones, and the new one has smaller and more closely spaced ribs, and all the pocket holes are already in those, so my screws are going to miss and screw into nothing. And screwing into nothing doesn't hold a building together. So to deal with that, my plan is, and this might be a little daft, but I'm going to try it anyway, inlays. I've marked out where, where the pearl and tails or whatever you want to call them are landing, and I'm going to router those out half thickness. I'm going to take some scrap bits, and I'm going to router them down to half thickness and cut matching pieces and cement those in so that in the area I need to screw into that this board is solid. So I don't know, that might be crazy, might be like way too much work, but it ought to work and I've only got one of them to do. So I'm gonna try it out, see how it goes. The other reason this one's trickier than all the others is because it's awkward. This is the roof over the trailer here, and it's super in the way for everything I need to do. I'm actually standing right now on a pallet in the forks attached to my excavator, used as a makeshift man lift here. I got this clamped up, got the glue in there. I'm gonna give this a few minutes to set up. Didn't bring any rags up with me, so it's a mess. But that's the hard bit that needs to be aligned right. Now I can go down the line, screw it through the OSB sheathing on the top, and pocket hole it from the backside, get it all secured, and then go down to the far end and get to work on trimming it and fitting it, and that all should be pretty easy. Alright, so that was awkward and I didn't have anywhere to put the camera, but I went down the rake and screwed in all the connections for this last uh, fascia board. So all that's left to do now is to trim off this awkward end and fascia will be complete and weather tight and solvent welded and hopefully good for 100 years of rainstorms. All right, that's job done.